Today on Toys of the Jedi, we're going to be covering all of the reveals from Hasbro's Fan First Wednesday, including Vintage Collection and Black Series. I am the father. Chris Cook, your host for Toys of the Jedi. Now, as I mentioned in the start, we are covering all of the news and reveals from the Hasbro Fan First Wednesday live stream that streamed earlier on today. Now, Hasbro revealed quite a lot of new stuff in this uh, in this stream. Plenty of Black Series, plenty of Vintage Collection. Uh, it's still debatable as to what's uh, which one's going to be favourite on that. But there's also a nice little hint of what's to come as well. So stay tuned to the end of the video for that stuff. Uh, they did also reveal some in some bits and pieces from some of the smaller lines the non-collector centric ones should we say uh, and we'll be covering that for you as well anyway without any further ado let's get on with the reveals <laughs> Now, as most of you know, my focus for collecting is the Vintage Collection and Hasbro are making good on their promise of reveal, releasing all of the figures that interact with the Razor Crest. So with today's reveals, we got three brand new sculpts of uh, figures that were completely unrevealed until now. First up is Bo-Katan. She is an all new sculpt absolutely amazing looking figure hopefully the photo reel that they'll be able to get on this will match the sort of thing that we got with the black series because again that's another absolutely fantastic figure this one does come with a swappable head and helmet because obviously they wanted to keep the look of the hair absolutely spot on so they decided to go for a swappable part I'm so glad they've gone this route it makes such a difference especially when you look at other characters that they've done in the line where this has been the, uh, the the way of doing things and it does make such a difference really works well she's going to come with a posable viewfinder a removable jetpack the twin blasters and one of the other things i mentioned is rocker ankles so uh very nice looking figure on this one can't wait to get my hands on her definitely a pre-order for me Next up we have the Mithril. Now this is a character that had made his first appearance in Season 1 uh, and obviously reappeared in Season 2. Uh, again, this one is an all new sculpt. Surprisingly with rocker ankles on this one, but not going to complain about that in the least. It does come with a blaster. This is the same one that came with K2SO previously. Um, there's also a hologram of his bounty puck, which is what Mando places in front of him in that very first episode. Uh, it's going to come with the binders and what looks to be a wrench. I may have missed what that was, but it does look to be um, an excellent little accessory to, to complement the figure as well. So, yeah, definitely one worth picking up, certainly if you want to recreate some of those earlier scenes, like very first scene in The Mandalorian should be a great one to get. The third new reveal for the Vintage Collection was Queel. Now, this is a figure that's been rumoured for a long time. Uh, it was hinted that he might have been offered around as an exclusive, which people didn't pick up. He is now being made available in the mainline collection, so yet yeah, definitely one to look forward to here. Again, this is a completely new sculpt. Going to come with a blaster, which is obviously one of the things that you do see him with in the uh, in this series uh fantastic photo reel you can really see nick nolte in this sculpt of the figure absolutely cracking little figure this one so yet yeah, definitely one to pick up and again you do need him for a lot of the scenes all he needs now is a blurg to ride maybe that's something that hasbro will think about in the future and the other actual reveal for the Vintage Collection is a repack, but I must say this is probably the most sensible repack that they have done so far. Finally, we are getting the Rebel Soldier Echo Base Battle Gear re-released on a vintage car back. Now, this figure was incredibly short-packed back when it was released in TVC 1.0. Uh, great figure, lovely removable goggles that fit over his eyes or on top of his hat, as you can see here. Comes with a blaster really really good figure i'm really interested to see what they'll do with the photo reel on this one um should be quite an improvement as well even if you have got that original figure so yes another one that's definitely going to be on the list to pick up and great to see that they are listening to fans in getting some of those really difficult to find figures out into the line this one should fly off the shelves especially as it's an army builder as well a couple of other bits of information for the Vintage Collection. The Republic Trooper that won the fan vote over on Instagram, he's going to be released as a shop Disney exclusive, certainly in the UK, US. Not sure if that's going to be quite the same over here for the UK, possibly a Hasbro Pulse thing. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But yeah, that's one way of getting in. Good figure, well worth, well worth picking up. And he's going to be available for pre-order tomorrow. That's the 10th of June at 1pm Eastern Time. The other thing they revealed was a 
behind the scenes video of the Razor Crest. Now, in this video, like they said there, they hinted that there was going to be a Queel figure. Um, he was obviously revealed just after that. Looks to be like it's coming along really nicely. They've shown it to John Favreau and he absolutely adores what they've done. Gave him a special little message as well, which you can see on screen now. Really, really nice little video actually. It's quite a good little promotional spot and uh, we'll be putting that up on its own a little bit later on. Now, just one thing that is worthy of mention within the video there were some things that were blurred out so whether that's something that they'd photographed for the box art but weren't quite ready to reveal yet or not i don't know you can see those bits just here on the screen if you have any thoughts as to what those might be drop it in the comments down below now there was a couple of other bits of information for the vintage collection but we'll cover that towards the end of the video Moving over to the Black Series, and there was a metric ton of reveals for the 6-inch scale. They started off with some of the 50th anniversary lines. This is going to be the archive wave, and it's the final wave for 2021. So there's going to be Princess Leia. This is going to be updated with Photo Reel. I do think they did a Photo Reel version when it went on the 40th anniversary card, but again, they've tweaked the Photo Realistic paint job and put it onto this one here. So yeah, if you haven't had that Princess Leia already, this is a good update to get. They're also going to be doing a Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan Kenobi. Again, this is with the updated photo reel. I'm not entirely convinced that this is the best Obi-Wan face sculpt. Personally, I thought the one they did with the clone armor from the Tartakovsky series on top of that uh, Revenge of the Sith Jedi outfit would have been a better choice. But we have what we have. Uh, it be interesting to see what the in-hand images look like for that uh, paint job. Because I know it did peg warm over here quite a bit. The third reveal was the 501st Clone Trooper. Now, this is a re-release of the figure that was in the multi-pack with four other clones. Um, very sensible one in my book. Uh, probably one that I'm going to try and pick up to go alongside the Ark Trooper and Captain Rex. That should make for a very nice little display on its own. So, yep, yeah, this one is exactly the same figure. Uh, maybe some slightly tweaked paint tops, but nothing, nothing majorly different between those two. And finally, Revan was revealed. Obviously, he sold particularly well in the black packaging a while back. Uh, still commands quite a high price on the secondary market. So this is a very sensible one to get into the uh, into the line again. Um, they did note that there was an updated saber colour. So it makes them a bit more vibrant um, than the original release. So if that's something you're particularly fussed about, maybe worth picking this one up again. Sticking with the Black Series, and again, with it being the fifth anniversary of Rogue One, they are looking to get some more Rogue One-inspired product out. First off was a long, long, long-awaited figure in the Black Series line, and that's Bodhi Rook. This is actually completes the Rogue One crew, and finally you can stand them all nicely on display. And he really is a fantastic figure. You can see, obviously, all new sculpt, completely done from scratch, from the ground up, and it really does look just like Riz Ahmed. They've done a really good job here of capturing the likeness. I think they've done an excellent job, obviously, with the photo reel as well. That adds to it perfectly. The backpack, they've said it does plug in separately to the um, to the port that you... Sorry, the cable that you he comes with can plug in to the backpack. Uh, it's got a wind-out rope that uh, will obviously extend pretty much like the 5POA figure did. And it also comes with an easy wind-up feature. So you can take the backpack off, wind it back in nicely and store it away to, to look beautiful there this is also being the first rogue one figures that we've got they revealed the new color scheme for them now it's turquoise for rogue one so obviously that's what you're seeing here uh, all in all i think boda rook excellent uh, addition to anybody's collection certainly if you've got the other figures now if you haven't got the other figures they are actually going to be releasing pretty much all of the rogue one crew again in the new packaging style all of them with updated photo reel technology so first up here we've got Jin Erso being that she's the commander of the crew, uh, team she's actually got the number one slot on the packaging as well uh, looks to be a really solid update I know the first figure did hang around a fair bit uh, kind of stuffed a bit from first wave syndrome where they overshipped it um, but that doesn't stop her from being a fantastic figure in the first instance so just adding the photo reel I think this one probably is worth picking up a second time if you haven't already she comes with all of the accessories that she did the first time around so you're not going to be missing out on anything there 
Up next in the line is Cassian Andor. Now this is the one that was originally a Walmart exclusive. So again, it's gonna be a slight repaint with updated photo reel. They've paid particular attention to the beard to make sure that that blends in much more cleanly than the original one between the, the unbearded part of the face and obviously the facial hair itself. So that, I think they've done a really good job with that. It also comes with his split apart rifle uh, so that again, you can display him either with just his pistol or with a full longer rifle so yep very nice one and certainly if you couldn't get hold of that walmart exclusive a really good way of picking up this figure next up in the wave was the k2so figure now this is just a simple repaint they've done a slight update to the eyes to make it a bit more screen accurate i think the re the, to be honest this is the one that's actually really disappointing in this wave because he comes with no accessories whatsoever you'd think with it being the uh, the re-release they would have actually put in something like the blaster that he has on the on Scarif uh, that Jin gives him uh, would have been a nice addition possibly a little mouse droid or something something really just to actually give a little bit more value for money to this figure because otherwise it's just him in the box it's a bit a bit dull to be perfectly honest um, nevertheless it is a worthwhile figure if you don't have him already um, one that's a good one to add to your collection because the actual original figure is a really solid figure so the final figures that they revealed for the Rogue One lineup were two of the more recent ones in that uh, from from that film. First up is Chirrut Imwe. He uh, is obviously exactly the same figure as before, but he does come with updated photo reel deco. So again, very nice. And actually, looking at these images, that does make a huge difference to the original figure. So if you haven't got the original, this is a great one to pick up now. Finally. You can't have Chirrut without his mate Baze. So yeah, again, Baze has been updated with the photo reel, and it, for this character, it really makes all the difference, um, and completely <laughs> kind of makes your old Baze figure uh, a bit worthless. He's worth picking up this new one purely for the updated photo deco, uh, fo photo reel deco on this one. So yeah, absolutely worth all that. These figures are all going to be fan channel exclusives. They're due in the fall, and they go up for pre-order again, tenth of June at 1 p.m eastern time now sticking with rogue one black series but with two completely brand new figures they did reveal antok merrick obviously blue leader from the battle of scarif and what have you so this is a really really good figure one of my favorite characters from the film so i'm so glad they're getting him out in the black series they noted that he's going to be using the Snowspeeder pilot arms from the Luke Skywalker figure because that's more accurate to the, the pilot suits used in Rogue One and also the helmet from that figure as well but obviously updated with the deco for Blue Leader to actually just for that to be specific. The rest of the body is going to be the Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot so I think this is a very sensible mix of those two parts to get you a really accurate Rogue One pilot. The head is a completely new sculpt, and I think it's a pretty decent likeness to the actor um, who played Antop Merrick. So, yeah, really worth picking up this one. Again, comes with that lovely turquoise-style packaging. Definitely one that's worth adding to your collection. The other one is Galen Urso. Now, this is his outfit from when he was on the Edu project as it were so it's that uh, scientific outfit that he wears there i think it's a really good really good face sculpt and uh, photo real deco on that that is mad mickelson down to a t it's a lovely sculpt already most of it is reused however the torso and obviously the head are completely new so that just adds um, that bit of variety to it while still making it making use of existing figures he is going to come with the death star plans that were originally released with the rebel fleet trooper now granted he never was seen with those in hand but i do think it's a nice little addition to actually get, just put a little bit more variety into the uh, into the packaging so it's not just a plain figure on his own it gives them the accessories it really does help fill it out there now these last two figures are going to be exclusive to Target so you are going to have to do a little bit of hunting on those. I imagine for us UK collectors though the usual suspects will be able to get those in for you. Now the other thing I wanted to cover just very quickly was that they released a load of new images for the mission fleet. So we've got the Mandalorian Battle in the Badlands figure and vehicle. So this is Mandalorian on a Blurg. Lovely little figure, probably going to be the same sculpt as the one that came with quill so yeah nice little figure to pick up there uh, there was also a 
Mission Fleet Clone Commando Clash Battle Pack. This looks to be the Bad Batch character. So Hunter, Echo, Wrecker, Crosshair. Uh, plenty of different bits and pieces there. So four figure sets, uh, ten accessories. Um, nice little one there. If you haven't gone for the big Razor Crest, the Mission Fleet Razor Crest Outrider Rim Run Deluxe Vehicle might be a little more up your straight. This one's coming in at $39.99. Comes with the Mandalorian himself and the child. So lovely little one, perfectly scaled to that smaller, smaller scale there. They also showed a Mission Fleet Gear Class uh, figure. This is the Battle Droid on a Stap. Um, or STAP depending on how you like to pronounce it um, so yeah nice little figure there uh, again this this scale seems to be doing a similar sort of thing to the Galactic Heroes quite quite fun little line there so that'd be good uh, we've also seen and this may be a spoiler for the Bad Batch so if you don't want to know look away now Tech riding an ATRT uh, again I think we may have had this vehicle already before and the Tech figure obviously rounds out the Bad Batch group as well. And there's also a Mandalorian set uh, featuring Bo-Katan with her Gauntlet Starfighter Siege. Uh, so Bo-Katan and a very nice Mandalorian ship. And also Moff Gideon and his Outland TIE Fighter. So yep, two, two more uh, nice new little things for the Mission Fleet set. We're also going to be getting Anakin Skywalker with a Bark Speeder. Now, much like Hasbro's have done at some of the previous live stream events, they also revealed some pipeline characters. Now, these are the ones that uh, we're going to tell you they're coming so that we beat Yak Face to the Punch on letting you know that they're out there. And uh, But they don't show any product details. It's just an image of the figure to let you know when they're coming up. So, again, these are possibly going to be available around about the tail end of this year, maybe the early part of 2022. So a little bit of a way out on that, but at least you know they're coming. Now, for the Black Series, they did say that they were going to be doing a Jeddah Patrol Trooper. This is obviously the one that's got that nice big backpack uh, that looks a bit different to um, the standard Stormtrooper. So I imagine it'll be fairly straightforward. Take that figure, the, original, the decent one they've done recently, and just stick a new backpack on him with a new pauldron. So fairly easy repaint for, um, for them to do there. They also said they're going to be doing a Bib Fortuna, so this is going to be an OT version. Um, again, would fill out a nice Jabba's Palace. The third figure they revealed was that they were going to be doing is a Mayfield true in his trooper disguise from Mandalorian Season 2. It's so, uh, yep, that's a very sensible one. And obviously, hopefully, the Migs Mayfield head would then switch over to uh, his standard tr outfit, maybe later on in the line. So that's a sensible one to do there. There's also going to be Fennec Shand coming, with her appearing in the Bad Batch as well. Very sensible one. Not at all surprised that they're doing that. Uh, so, yep, yeah, looking forward to her. Nomad Boba Fett. Everyone loves, loves a Boba Fett, so of course they were going to be getting one of those into the line as soon as possible. And Cobb Vanth. This is a character that I really enjoyed when, when he did first show up uh, on the series. So, again, great that he's actually coming into the line as well. Switching over to the Vintage Collection, and there was only three reveals for this scale. First up was, as for the Black Series, Bib Fortuna. So this is one of the original 96 figures that ticks off there, but it is going to be an all-new figure. So absolutely, we can get rid of that Saga one with a slightly dodgy face um, from, from previous ones. So that should be a good one. Looking forward to that. They also said there was going to be Lobot. Again, another original 96 figure ticked off the list. And I'm pretty sure that Chris Fawcett will be very pleased at this one. The third reveal was a little bit different. It's going to be the Navarro Cantina. So as a playset. So again, this was the Mandalorian Season 1 you saw this. Uh, going to be interesting to see what they actually do with this. Because at the moment, we haven't got a huge amount of figures that we can fill out that cantina with. So whether that means we're going to get some more stuff to go in that cantina. Great. If so, I hope that's the case. Um, but yeah, definitely interesting to see where that goes. And I've really enjoyed some of the previous playsets that they've done. So this one yet yeah, very much looking forward to that and the last bit of information was that Haslab is returning in 2021 so that's later this year and it's going to be black series so vintage collection fans you can put your wallets away take a breather because obviously we're still waiting for the razor crest on that one makes perfect sense that the black series would get one this time around 
Very curious to see what they're going to do with it because they said specifically it's not going to be a vehicle. I think they're still feeling a little bit burnt from that Force Awakens TIE fighter that they revealed, or, well, released not that long ago, which went on deep, deep clearance. Vehicles don't seem to do quite as well in the Black Series as they do in the much smaller scales, such as Mission Fleet, Vintage Collection, what have you. So with it not being a vehicle, it does beg the question, well, what's it going to be? I can't see it being a single figure. Uh, that's not quite what Haslap is about. But it could be some sort of beast that they're doing. So I've seen some speculation that it could be a Rancor. That's probably my favourite um, pitch as to where it's going to go. But you can just imagine that huge Rancor alongside with a Gamorrean Guard and uh, Luke Skywalker figure. That would look absolutely incredible. You can see some great photos and dioramas potentially coming up with that. Love to see that. But the other thing that was mentioned uh, by a couple of uh, mates in my group was the Jabba's Palace throne room setup. Now, again, depending on how big you go with this, that could be absolutely fantastic. We've got the Jabba figure already. We've got Jawas. We've got Princess Leia in her um, prisoner outfit that we could do. We've got her in the Bounty Hunter's Boosh disguise. We've got Lando Calrissian. We've got Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight. We've got... Bib Fortuna on the way. So there's plenty of options to fill out that immediate scene. The problem is, once you go beyond that, they're never going to do an Amanaman in the Black Series. He's too obscure. They're probably not even going to do a Woof in the Black Series. Even he's probably too obscure for most collectors of the Black Series. So I don't know. I don't know how well they're, they're going to be able to fill out that scene if they go for much beyond that. Just that one snapshot of, uh, of Jammer's uh, throne on its own. So it's a possibility, maybe, we'll see. Um, they could do the blockade runner, obviously, uh, because that's a very easy one to do. It's mainly just Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, Rebel Fleet Troopers, maybe a C-3PO and R2-D2, um, and have that packed out in there. That could be a really good one, but there was also the 12th Parsec thing that was released recently, which just did exactly that with lights and sounds as well. So. Whether that's going to be treading on somebody else's toes, I don't know. Ultimately, we'll have to wait and see. They're like, like they say, they're looking at doing this towards the end of this year, so autumn time. If you're a Black Series collector, definitely time to start saving those pennies. And that's our show for this week. There was one other little bit of news that they did say they were going to be doing some fan site reveals coming up in the next couple of months. So maybe places like JediBusiness.com, uh, FallOnToZuckers.com, some of those sort of sites may get some little reveals coming up. Be good to see what they do on those. Hopefully my mate Tim over at Bost Bounty gets something as well. Be good to see him get a reveal. But, uh, but that's it for today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do please click a like on the button down below. It really does help the channel. It helps other people know that it's a good video and uh, spread some love out there. That'd be good. Also, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It does mean that you get a heads up anytime we drop a new video. We are still doing our figure of the days over on Instagram and Twitter. So have a look at those. Feel free to disagree with me if you think I've got it completely wrong. I will take all criticism with uh, with the spirit it's intended. And uh, I'm happy to engage in the discussion on those if you think I've got it wrong. But they are a bit of a fun thing. A little bit of daily dose of Star Wars in your day every life. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, until next time.